it's Sarah, and I have another fairy house to share. This It's just hard to shoot from above. i got to turn it. But this is another votive. This is a votive, and it's just an O, like an egg shape. I guess it goes like that, right? Um, it was like, I, I used a coupon, so it was like $4.50, I think, with 40% off. Um, I did it yesterday and I'm happy with it. I just wanted to make it like the size for my fairies. So it's mainly the door, right? Um, so here's my fairy. So let me just tell you what I did. And I am going to do a tutorial probably tomorrow. I cleaned my house today, which I'm very excited. Um, but this little guy, I think this will give us a good... Um, size to work with so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing well enough and it won't be too too small but also uh, we could do it as a votive holder and we could cut little holes in the um, not just the windows because I made windows anyway I'll figure that out I'm just trying to change it up a little bit so here's my house I I'm not going to go over exactly everything I'll share that during the tutorial but what I want to mention is and I love the effect you get when you, it's called um, adding a patina or, well, mm, distressing it or, I don't know, I'm not using the right word, but the black paint. I definitely learned this from um, Mandarin Moon and Lynn's Crafts does it all the time to, to a lot of her stuff. And I am just now starting to give in to it because it definitely, it doesn't dull down. It does. It dulls the clay down in a way, but then you bring it back up with the um, Inca Gold. Uh, they're like a wax rub or your rub and buff and stuff like that. So it's okay. I'm giving in to it. I put a flower on top, so I'll share that first. And this was super easy. I just... I mixed a little bit of yellow and gold together, gold clay, and then I just cut it with my X-Acto knife into the shapes of these petals. I did one layer, and then I did another layer, and then I just cut a circle of brown and put that in the middle. And then I just kind of bent it and tw twisted it and tweaked it. So that was the top. This is... Um, what is that? Liquid pearls. And it kind of, I was disappointed a little bit because I, I did it after I baked it, but it still kind of fell. It didn't stay little spiky things that I wanted it to stay. Um, and the door, I did, um, I used my texture plate. So this is the wood grain texture um, plate. And I put a, some hinges and a doorknob and I cut a hole for the window did the same design as I did on my little one with the bricks around the, the door and um, did started the vine kind of here and just went up and twisted clay and made a vine going all around and then I added leaves. Some of the leaves I have this one, this right here, this size is a cookie cutter but the rest of them I just cut with oh out of a sheet, stabbed myself, out of a sheet of clay with my X-Acto knife. Made little these are called like embroidery, I would say, embroidery style flowers. And then around the side, I cut a bigger hole again with a cookie cutter and just framed it out with some white clay. Put, I put like five different butterflies. And these are molds. These are Martha Stewart molds. I didn't actually use any of the leaves because this is a very deep mold and I wanted them to be much thinner. But the, butterf the little butterfly I used, um, put that there, and then I just added stickles. And this bigger flower, these are just the applique flowers down here, but the bigger flowers, another mold. This is um, actually a cake decorating mold that you can get from uh, probably all the different uh, hobby and craft stores. So that's this bigger flower. So I did them in pink and purple. But then look at this fern. And I think this might be like the first time I ever used this fern mold. This is a Martha Stewart mold. I think they all three came in a set. And I am in love with it. It is so detailed and so gorge. Another butterfly. I textured the house. Like this is what I'll show you tomorrow. Once you put the clay on the um, 
glass, then you can just add some texture to it uh, with texture sheets or whatever you have. Um, another butterfly. And then this is just a big leaf cookie cutter that I have, and I just put it on there and kind of draped it over the top just to add something, you know. And then more flowers and another fern. And I added like several colors of Inca gold to this. Um, and I just love it. And back around to the front and added another fern here. So only three ferns, that's not bad. One, two, three, four butterflies. So that's not bad. Um, the grass was super simple. I decided to just keep it simple because this is gonna sit in the, in the dirt. I didn't wanna make a step or anything. I just decided to, it's just gonna sit down there. So it'll probably, a lot of that won't even show. At least up to here won't show, you know? So I just rolled it out. Oh, my dog's crazy. And I texturized it with, um, it's kind of like a fish scale texture sheet, but um, you can use any, I, I could have made it look like grass, but I just felt like using a texture sheet and that was like the, the one that I thought would be cool. So that's it. I just wanted to share that. This is a big one. Um, I haven't sealed it or anything. I think I, I lost a couple. Well, I glued them back on, but when I was, uh, what is the word? I don't know. Detailing it. I can't think of the patina. Adding a patina. I don't know. It's not really adding a patina. I think it's called antiquing where you add the black because, I mean, it makes a big difference. This door looked so different before I did that um, but then when I was rubbing the black paint off I pulled off a couple leaves that's just because I'm so rough and um, I left a lot of them sticking up like you can see them sticking out so I love it this is what I'm probably going to be using that's my dog shaking the camera in my fairy garden and um, I will do a tutorial for you guys tomorrow all right Thanks for watching.